All right, y'all, here we are in the year of our Lord, 2023, and um, Fox News is continuing to do refurb madness level idiocy when it comes to marijuana. So uh, I'm going to play this clip for you. They have a panel discussion. Like, Let's talk about the downsides of legalized weed. And uh, we'll break it down as we go. With uh, recreational marijuana now legal in 21 states, we're taking a closer look this week at the consequences. Advocates have long claimed that legalizing the drug would curb the black market. But recent evidence from New York, California, and other states finds the opposite is true, with legal weed markets across the country struggling to compete with their non-taxed illicit counterparts. We're back with Dan Henninger, Kim Strom. Let me pause it right up front here, because, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> This is a Weasley argument. Weed is still illegal at a federal level. So it's still technically illegal in the United States of America. Yes, some states are experimenting and, and they've legalized it at the state level, but it's still illegal at a federal level. So yeah, since that's the case, of course you're still going to have a thriving black market. And yeah, of course you're always going to have, you know, the black market can undercut the price of the legal weed for a variety of reasons. The taxes, for example. But, like, in the long run, if it was legalized, taxed, and regulated across the entire country, and, you know, you have a relatively competitive price for it, yeah, the black market is going to take a huge hit. Because they used to have literally 100% of the weed market in the U.S., and then if weed was legal, taxed, and regulated all around the U.S., I mean, we're talking about a drop to what? 20% of the market? they take a gigantic hit. Because people would rather, you know, go into a store that has, like, elevator music playing and nice LED lights and somebody nice behind the cash register than meet behind a dumpster at the jack-in-the-box, you know? Because when you deal in the black market, things get sketchy. They get sketchy. So it's just a Weasley point because he doesn't even acknowledge that technically weed is still not legal at the federal level. Anyway. So, and Jason Riley. So, Jason, you wrote this week about the uh, marijuana market in New York, which you said is heading toward farce. What's going on? <laughs> well, the, 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 the problem in New York is that while they've made selling uh, weed legal, they've been very slow to give people permits to set up shops. So, Okay, then be quicker with the permits. Problem solved. People are uh, setting up shops without permits, and now they've decided they're going to raid those shops. And uh Okay, so give the people who set up shops without permits the permits and don't raid them. Problem solved. So, like, every single thing they bring up in here is, like, such tedious garbage, you know? Like, they're simple solutions, but the whole point of this—I should be clear. The whole point of this segment— is not to actually, like, nuance troll. The whole point of this segment is to be like, oh, maybe it was a mistake to legalize weed in some states. Maybe it's actually really bad. Uh, and that's why I think uh, you have an element of farce there. Out in California, uh, the situation is a little different. Uh, but because of the taxes and regulations put on selling legal marijuana in California, it's much more expensive than it is uh, in the black market. So people are still going to the black market in order to buy it because it's cheaper. So it's just some of the uh, 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 unintended consequences that have been put in place uh, by these laws. And you would think that policymakers would have thought this through a little more. In New York, they're reserving uh, some of the pot licenses for people who were previously convicted of drug offenses which is one of the reasons that uh, they've been so slow in handing out these, these permits. I mean, they're basically asking people who are former, former they're convicted of something to, to then be the legal dispensers of marijuana. So I actually, I mean, I totally get the logic of why they would do that. You know, it's like, it, here's the argument. The drug war disproportionately cracked down on communities of color and black people and, you know, it would be messed up to legalize it and they give all the permits to, like, upper-class white businessmen. Because you had people who were in the drug trade and they were arrested and locked up for it. That was unfair to them. So basically, a way to sort of, like, a little hat tip to say, hey, my bad, man, we shouldn't have locked you up to begin with, is, like, you guys can get a certain percentage of, of the permits. I actually totally understand that idea in theory, and I agree with it. I guess the issue that they're running into is, turns out the people who would do... um 
you know, black market drug dealing are not exactly the same kind of people who are going to fill out all the government paperwork and go through the proper procedure to get the, the forms you need and the permits you need in the first place, which is like, okay, I mean, I'd be open to the idea of reforming that part of the law, right, or at least expediting the process to get um, permits to people who are up front and, and want it right now, but don't act like you don't get where that idea came from, right? Like, everybody understands that's a reasonable uh, attempt to try to to sort of pay back for the injustice that was the drug war disproportionately cracking down on, on communities of color. I mean, if somebody was locked up because they were a drug dealer, I don't even think that should be a crime. So, of course, not only should they be let out, there should be some sort of compensation. This is their version of, like, how society is going to compensate you. you. You can get a crack at a permit and be one of the first in line. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what's going on. One, one of the reasons uh, the supporters wanted to pass this law was to address racial disparities in the criminal justice system. But what we've learned from states that have had pot legal for more than a decade, states like Colorado and Washington State, is that those racial disparities have not gone away. In some places, they've actually increased. And so, again, that is another uh, unintended consequence of, uh, of, uh, of supposedly well-meaning legislation. Kim, when it comes to California, California is uh, uh, having a real hard time, as Jason suggested. And one of their, their uh, answers here is to try to get an exemption under federal law to be able to form a compact with other states that are, have legal marijuana so that they can export some of their marijuana to these other states so that the pricing will be, the supply-demand mix will be better in California. Uh, uh, it, it, it's, uh, uh, it's really weird, particularly because under federal law, the Controlled Substances Act, uh, uh, marijuana is still illegal. It's a Schedule One drug. Yeah, I mean, can you think about this? Let's think about this in another context. Let's imagine that you know, Texas wanted to make a compact to export firearms to other states uh, in contravention of various federal laws and rules. I mean, this is essentially what they're doing, but it's because of the major problem they have here. Uh, I will add one other thing that has been an unintended consequence. Many of the states, as their voters pass these referendum to make pot legal, uh, local or, or the states also decided that they were going to minimize um, uh, any kind of charges against people who are caught engaging in illegal marijuana behavior. And so if you are one of those black market people, that's what's behind this huge spiral um, is not only can you sell it for more money, but you've been given a green light by your local government that if you do get caught, nothing's really going to happen to you much. And that yeah, but like, so the answer is legalize tax and regulate for the entire country and free all the nonviolent drug offenders. There's none at the federal level anymore, although 4,000 people got their records wiped clean because of what Biden did. But um, yeah, like at the state level, they should free them too. So all these discrepancies in the law are a real problem, but their way to tackle it is in the opposite direction. They're like, yeah, just go back to like the drug war. Why would we do that when one of the architects of the drug war who worked in the Nixon administration admitted the real purpose of it? It's his words, not mine. He said, look, who were our enemies politically in the Nixon White House? Our enemies were hippie white people and minorities, black people. And so we found a way to criminalize their lifestyle. Uh, they were never going to vote for us, so we basically retaliated. That's what they said. You can go find the quote. You know, Nixon administra administration official admits what the drug war was actually about. It was all over the place. So the story came out, how, it was years ago now, but that's the whole purpose. It wasn't actually like, we are going to protect the American people and the children from harmful substances. Are you kidding me? Alcohol is gigantic in this country. There are a lot of problems associated with it, but I don't want to ban it. You want to know why? Because at the end of the day, they're missing all of it. All their arguments are missing the point, right? It doesn't matter. You can nitpick in this area. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, freedom is what people believe in on this front. Freedom. You should be able to put in your body whatever you want to put in your body as long as you're not hurting anybody else. Now, if it goes too far and some percentage of people get addicted, not necessarily to marijuana because it's not physically addictive. It could be psychologically addictive, but not physically addictive. Then, yeah, like some people should get help. They should go to rehab. There should be health professionals that help them out with stuff like that. No doubt about it. But for your average adult, they should be able to do whatever they want without input from these weird nerds. Like nobody cares what your opinion is. Nobody cares about you nitpicking. Oh, what about this problem and that problem? No. Bottom line is legalize, tax, and regulate. Um, you know, make sure... This stuff is safe, this stuff is reasonably priced, and then sort of let the chips fall where they may. And there's no doubt that you will 
the the black market will take a huge hit in that scenario, no matter how much they try to gaslight you and act like that's that wouldn't happen. That's also inspiring this, and and some more dangerous things out in, in California. You are now having reports of of drug cartels getting involved in this, and it sort of shows what happens when government doesn't have a, a real plan, a plausible plan for regulation, and isn't willing to punish those that are lawbreakers under that plan. Again. The problem, if legal California marijuana businesses are getting in bed with cartels, what's the core of that problem? The core of that problem is the federal government hasn't legalized marijuana yet, so you can't have some legal growing operation that they can do business with. It's easier for them to go to the people who've been in business for a long time, who maybe have more product and know what they're doing more, etc., so it's just, they're again they're missing the point. This is all fear mongering to try to be like we should ban. It's twenty twenty three for the love of God. Have you seen the polls on this issue? The polls on this issue are colossally high now, over sixty percent. I think some are up to seventy percent of legalized weed. You lost. You lost on the issue. Move on to your next culture war. You know, ooga booga, be afraid, garbage. Uh, Dan, I guess the response from the uh, legalized uh, crowd would say, uh, well, look, we just have to uh, uh, repeal, get marijuana out of the Controlled Substantive Act and legalize it all across the country. That's what right. Democratic Majority Leader in the Senate, Chuck Schumer, is trying to do. Do you think that's the answer? No, that is not the answer. Uh, that is far from the answer, Paul. Uh, what a catastrophe it would be for the federal government to legalize marijuana. I mean, let's understand one thing. People sit there going, why the heck is all of this going on? It can't be real. Uh, it's because states like California and New York need the money. They think they're going to get tax revenue. That's why they have been legalizing casinos. That's why they legalize sports betting. They think they're going to get tax revenue from uh, legalizing vice. But put this into context. Marijuana is a drug. You inhale it, you chew it. It alters the chemistry in your brain. There is a lot of reason to believe that the marijuana being made today is much more powerful than that that was being used at Woodstock back in the 1960s. And we just had the government report that teenagers, mental illness among teenagers and thoughts of suicide are going up. This in a world of methamphetamine, fentanyl, and other drugs. What could go wrong legalizing marijuana in a context like that? Yeah, it's fascinating to watch this experiment take place in the states, uh, uh, but I think we ought to hold off on national legalization. So, in other words, drugs bad. Drugs really, really bad. Me no like drugs. Me stop you from taking drugs. What about the teenagers? It's not legal for teenagers to do it. It's not legal. You can have a law where adults can use it, but kids can't use it. And that's what it is and what it should be at the federal level. Of course, we do the same thing with alcohol. But, oh, teenagers, bad. Drug, drug, bad. Mess for your brain chemistry. Yeah, that's the point. Sometimes people take a downer because they want to relax more. Sometimes people take an upper because they want to be more awake and more focused. Sometimes people take a hallucinogenic because they want to party with Scooby-Doo in their boxers as they eat cookie dough ice cream. Like, d yeah, it's a hashtag freedom. It's amazing to me. These are the same people who whine and yell and bitch and moan about economic freedom, we believe in economic freedom, which they mean, hey, let the capitalists do whatever they want and treat their workers like property. That's what they mean. That's the type of freedom they believe in. Freedom for the capitalists to control their workers. That's the kind of economic freedom they believe in. When it comes to social issues, they're as authoritarian as it gets. They're as in favor of big government as humanly possible. They want the government to arrest you for smoking weed, arrest you for selling weed, arrest you for being involved with any drug whatsoever, except whiskey, because that dude probably likes a glass of whiskey every night. So that, no, that's cool because that's mine. But if it's yours, no, can't have it. God, this is so dumb. It's 2023. They're doing a reefer madness type garbage. Jesus Christ. Just say, like, just be honest up front instead of trying to nitpick and find the holes in the argument and, and the holes in the system. Just, just come out and say it. Be like, I don't like weed. I want to ban things I don't like. We should ban it. At least then you'd be honest. At least then it'd be all out there in the open. But, you know, you can't do that because your true feelings are so beyond mockable, so you come up with these pathetic rationalizations to justify your position. Well, it ain't working. It's, it's nowhere near working. And by the way, when you live in a country which is such a late-stage capitalist hellscape, and you have people suffering on a daily basis, over 70% of people living paycheck to paycheck, 
you know, unions are at a historic low, even though we've seen some good, uh, you know, movement recently in the right direction with some places unionizing Starbucks, Amazon, etc. But like, people are struggling. You have uh, tens of millions of people who are uninsured or underinsured when it comes to their health care. You have the top 1% effectively stole $50 trillion from the bottom 90% since the 1970s. You have all these problems. The very least that the elites can do is to say, you know what? Go ahead. We'll let you smoke a joint at the end of the day. But they want to take even that from you. So... So gross. Ever since Adpocalypse, when YouTube defunded all independent news and politics overnight, we haven't trusted them. We know they can pull the rug out from underneath us at any time. If you enjoy this content, please consider tipping a dollar or two per month on the Secular Talk Patreon. Link in the video description box below. Thanks for your support.